There's a thing. Didn't it cancel today, or am I weirdly out of sync with my memory? <laughs> Hi, Elliot. Hey, Hank. How are you? Um, it's a little I, bit I screwed weird. up and let the uh, meeting at URL, the other one, expire. So I'm just trying to send it to everyone here. Wish it would just let me renew it. Says, oh, you can't edit that one. It's already done. Um. <laughs> Yeah, um, I am as a three blocks away. A warehouse is on fire, which is actually really amazing because I can see the fire from here, like literally the flames. <laughs> the big fire. Uh oh. Yeah, it won't, won't come here, but uh, we have uh, sirens and uh, um, firefighters all day around. Like, like it's like six hours now, and they're still not. They still, still can see flames, so it's a big fire. Uh, I'm gonna put myself on mute for a little bit. Yeah, actually, I thought we uh, canceled this meeting, so I uh, was Why? first of all amazed, uh, because of the reds. Yeah, I don't know. I thought, and I was still in my Canada. I was like. Mm. Maybe. I don't remember canceling it, but we might have. No, probably not. My, I, maybe I didn't, then I didn't accept the cancellation. So why else should it be my calendar? So but, um, there might be a message for you to uh, uh, approve in the mailing list. Oh, let me check. Yeah. Or... Um, I've sent him the message anyway. There is no email list notification of mass attendee email or mass recipient email, so I don't see anything. If you give me the mailman uh, notifies me if there's something. Over. Strange with an email to the list. Um, so Deary had gone and updated his ticket. Uh, I just saw the stream of emails about it. And normally I just prefer to read them in GitHub. Um, so it would be good to take a look there. Hi, Dave. Sorry to screw up the WebEx. That's... Good morning, or at least morning my time. I, yeah. I think there are a lot of people here, uh, despite the uh, uh, invite. Dave, Elliot. Here last week, weren't you, Hank? I think so. In the list. All. Thomas. Um, so 
Jiri. Um, created his ticket. You engaged with him a bunch, Dave, yesterday and the day before. Um, When you say ticket, you mean number 60, right? Ah, yeah, apparently. Yeah, I Thanks. do. <clears throat> okay. This paragraph work for you, Dave? Not sure how. Oh, I see you're now it. projecting, so I need to read it. I did not get a chance to read it before this call. Yeah. Problem with being on the left coast is that you're the last to wake up. I'm still not sure I'm awake. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I've read it. Um, and I need to read his comment, but what about the following? And I read it without the comments inserted. So. Um, so I still don't think it clearly addresses my comment. Um, it's much better, I agree. Um, the key question is, um, what ties the evidence generator to the link endpoint? And it's missing a sentence or a statement about that. Fix that or? Sorry, what was that? Do you think that we can fix that? Um, we could probably come up with a sentence, although I'm just uh, only awake enough to not necessarily be able to suggest the text. Uh, okay, so I'm going to I'm going to pull this sentence into the into the th that uh, one's already the in there. That's already in there. It's already in there. Mm -hmm. Made another an update to his thing. Um, well, it's similar. So, for example, if you look at six eighteen, oh, maybe not. Hold on, let me let me check. Um, no, you're right. He has. Go ahead and pull that in there. Okay, does someone want to pick another? While I'm doing this, does someone want to? Because I'm still not. Uh, I'm still not sure that sentence is that, that sorry that quote is sufficient, but it is better. Um, I think it depends on what the phrase "may have received evidence" means. That received evidence that. Um, 
we have received evidence, or I'm trying to find that here. Um, it's in the what about the following? Yeah. yeah. Right. Because um, normally the uh, uh, evidence itself would include the signature of the evidence, right? Um, and so the thing that's find the evidence is what you're anchoring it to you. And so what he's trying to say is um, evidence may be implicitly signed by being sent across a communication channel that signs it, right? And so it's not signed at the object level, it's signed at the you know transport level or something like that. I think that's what he's trying to get at. Um, If it's just me, then you can go on, but. Uh... Okay, um, I think we have, uh, we wrote a separate draft about this, the UCCS draft, which talks about the unsigned token stuff. And uh, and the main part of that draft is about discussing the secure channel uh, when it's appropriate, it's prerequisites and requirements and probably it's user scenarios. So now I underst finally understand what this tie is because literally does not say that you can uh, leave something out of evidence and it is exchanged by the qualities of the communications link it is called here um that's right so i think that is that uh, so I, by inference now and by dave telling it to me i know it, it all falls together now for me and my mental picture but uh before that was like why <laughs> and now, now I see. So that, that's what the, the it should start with the problem it solves. So that, so that's like Hank. Yeah, yeah, I can tell you're more awake than I am. But maybe you have an idea of how to change the text to be more clear. Because it sounds like you need my interpretation to get it. So yeah, I see. Yeah, well, let's let's do the interim first, and then delve okay. into how this text works. Okay. Maybe there are some questions about this in the group. Okay, that sounds fine. Um, I have to rebase this in it. Hank is now unsure what we are doing. <laughs> are we waiting uh, I'm trying to um, I'm trying to uh, rebase um, the text so that I can add the the what about the following, and we can see it all uh, together with all the suggestions that we made. Um, and um, then we can see it all together is the goal. Um, so now I want to add is anchored. And so this, this, what about goes at the end of this thing? Communication link or may have evidence.
Anyone else join? No. Um, I wanted to say maybe there's another pull request that um, we could work on next and will be worth reading initially. Hank? Um, I would nominate from either, Dave. either of the top two because nobody else has uh, reviewed them yet. And certainly the top one, the ad privacy. Yeah. This one, I okay, great, thank you. Um, I think you passed probably, maybe you did it while I was sleeping. Oh, no, you approved them a long time ago. All right, great, thank you, Michael. Um, this one, I tried to capture the discussions we'd already had in this meeting as opposed to proposing anything new. So I may have gotten it wrong in the text, but I think the concepts are what we already discussed. Um, I thought it was fine. I just, I didn't, I wanted one more vote to. Yeah. Pull it in. Hank? Way. The um, first line is just putting in line breaks, right? There's nothing, the, the, the addition is the second paragraph there. I don't see Ned on the call here. I think he was one of the people that wanted that, that wanted this change. I don't so. have him on chat anywhere. Uh, he probably may be still struggling looking for the right URL. No, I think different it's chat programs, and I don't have them. And so I thought it was either Peter or Paul. I see both of you guys on here. I forget. Uh, well, I thought one of you guys was also making this point last time. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little lost. Which uh, which pull request are we in here? Uh, it's on the screen, but this is pull. This the highest numbered pull request. It's um, for eighty one. Eighty one. Yeah, this is the one about um, that the tester may need to go through a process where it gets trust in the uh, verifier, and so somebody pointed out that there may be a, like a neutral attestation almost, and so this is the text that was added into the privacy consideration section for that. I have to say, you may not want to send your sensitive, you know, evidence to somebody until you've attested who they are and that they're healthy. That's really. Your privacy, I think that addresses is just fine. The point that I had originally tried to make, though, was that there might be other policy concerns that an attester wants to make um, or, or have. So basically that um, the idea that Participating in an attestation is a voluntary act according to their own policy. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, th this paragraph implies that that's true with respect to privacy. Yeah. So, are you okay with this? So, thanks, Peter. So, are you okay with this paragraph? Yes. Are there any amendments? Okay. Great. Any objections to merging it now? No objections from me either. This looks good. All right, cool. Thanks, Paul. Okay. All right, can you go ahead and press the delete branch button? I usually go and do that afterwards, but as long as you have it on the screen. Yeah, it's down, down, right above the, never mind. Yeah, yeah, it's there. Thanks. You're deleting it in uh, my fork, and so usually I would do that, but since you have it up. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, I'm not very good with deleting branches for that. Yeah, so this field. one, if you uh, remember right, we had a discussion and said, well, let's go ahead and uh, merge it and then do any subsequent changes in a separate pull request. And so right. uh, one of my comments there was all the previous text was talking about appraisal policies for evidence. And I had said near the end of the call that, well, actually, and I think I made this in a GitHub comment on that issue that we merged too, that says, actually, most of this discussion also applies to appraisal policies for attestation results. And so that's what I try to do here too, is you can see I put in a section break at like one third called appraisal policies. And most of the text uh, I then, uh, you can see like in the next uh, line down 334, you can see it used to say appraisal policies for evidence. And so I tried to say that the following applies to both types of appraisal policy. 
Um, and then I tried to just remove things like for evidence and uh, make that flow. So, and so I was trying to capture the same points, but make them be um, applying to both types of appraisal policy. That was the intent of this one. Works for me. Yeah, so this is, remember, this is originally the point about uh, reference values and other types of, uh, you know, constants that they used. And so that can equally apply to the appraisal policy for attestation results. The only problem I have with this is appraising party because I assume that the relying party does not do the appraisal, which is an exclusive thing before the verifier. But that might be nitpicky, so I don't know if it's worth complaining. I think the point is they have an appraisal policy for the results. Right. Yeah, see, this what is... the relying party appraising an attestation result in the parenthetical part? Uh, yeah, this here, again, this, this parenthetical. Yes, yes, just for my reasons, I would use evaluation or something for the results and appraisal for the for the evidence, and then you're never confused. Well, we could also uh, not, I mean, if, in other words, uh, delete the first part and appraising party and promote the IE into the actual subject. That's also okay, I assume. Again, but then yeah, we read, then the verifier appraising evidence would be the first would be the beginning of the sentence. Right? The verifier appraising evidence or the relying party appraising attestation results checks the values. So, uh, it's actually the first two lines, Michael. You'd want to copy down. He said just the first one line. So my my, my point being is that the party. relying party is not appraising the policies. The relying party is appraising the. Sorry, it's not appraising the policies. It's appraising the attestation result. Think about that. Um, we've already defined the term. The we've already defined the term appraisal policy for attestation results. So we've already defined that. That is true. Okay, we can go with that. Um, I'm again. It was nitpicky in the, in the first place, uh, but uh, this some this somehow looks like there is another verification. And uh, very not, and then, uh, now the relying party basically is a verifier of a different scope. Uh, no, it's an appraiser of a different scope. Yeah, we don't have appraiser, but uh, that is the point I have, I'm making here. Yeah. Okay, so what is it you, you are suggesting to promote the parenthesis? Is that still on the table? Say again? Promote, Hank, would you prefer it promoted or would you prefer it the way that it is now that we've just talked about that? Just, uh, I would prefer it. If, 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 uh, if uh, an immediate improvement is to just remove an appraising party, move the okay. verifier to the top of the sentence, just as uh, they've okay. just okay. highlighted, and that is, of course, an improvement. Okay. Still, it doesn't address my point, which I think is, again, maybe a little bit too detailed, mm -hmm. but uh, I would, we can never tell, splash week, and then, you know, the, the appraisal is a burden. It's really, really hard sometimes. It really takes computational power, has timing issues and all that. The attestation result, on the other hand, should be easy to, easy to digest. Now we are applying the same procedure to the, uh, to the uh, um, data, and, mm -hmm. uh, and it looks same, the same, but it should be inherently different. And that is why I don't like to use the same term for something that should be inherently different. That's my only problem. I don't think it's inherently different. I think it is just a matter of scale. It's not a matter of uh, it's 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 quantitative, not qualitative. Mm, maybe I it, I would assume that it can be very you're complex. Still, yes, you're still checking the signer. You're still checking whether the signer has been revoked. If the if that's relevant, you're still checking the expiration time. Uh, okay. You may be checking other claims that were inserted by the verifier. So there's you can still do all the same operations. But you're right, it's typically much simpler. Like, is it signed by somebody that I trust and had it within a valid lifetime? Mm. Yeah, maybe but, but on the other hand, while I'm thinking about this, we are talking about composite evidence. We want to mix in a hierarchy evidence and attestation results. So in the end, the appraiser of a verifier would also consume attestation results at some point, probably. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's too detailed yeah. to just my ponderance, I think. So I didn't quite hear whether you wanted to promote this or not. I'm I'm a little bit trying to understand the changes to the text, as well as understanding your point, and I'm not really connecting what's wrong with the text. 
to let you guys rat hole you going into. If he likes it better, I'm gonna instead of uh, you doing it in a suggestion, let me do it in this in the same suggestion thing here. Um, so meaning I'm just doing exactly what you're doing, so you should see it right. pop up shortly. Yeah. Um, there's just there's a subtlety that you guys are arguing, and I'm actually just is just missing me. Maybe I also don't have enough caffeine. I was leading with maybe this is true today. So uh. <laughs> um, there you go. It should now refresh and have not. It's not updated text yet. It's still suggestions. So you can see the before and after. Yeah. The verifying fire, the verifier appraising evidence or the relying party appraising an attestation result checks the values of some claims. Once constraint specified, the appraisal process. Yeah, I think that the that uh, promoting it makes it read easier. Uh, the, the verifier appraising evidence. I, I have a problem with this. I feel like I have a problem with this first. Actually, I have a problem with. Could you say the verifier when it, it is appraising evidence? Yep, you could. Um... I think that would read easier. I, I okay, where the way on. it is is not incorrect, but I think is needlessly complicated English. Um, then probably the okay. panel will change to the line party. <clears throat> Refreshing now. <clears throat> Refresh the page. It's mixing plural and singular voice. Great. Hi. Uh, sorry, and it's singular versus plural of what? Voice. Uh, evidence is plural and uh, attestation result is. Uh, did we, what's the term that we use? Did we define the term attestation result or attestation results? What's the term in the terminology section? I thought it was plural the results. Thing that has you think you okay? So if we said attestation results is the term for a thing which contains a set of claims, and we use a plural word, then I'm happy to change. Um, probably reads better too because it deletes a word. So the terminology is singular in it. Comment updated that. Conceptual mental in the conceptual measures is plural. I I I made the change that it, Ned wanted. If you refresh again. Happier. Okay. Um, I'm making another one word suggestion change in the line below that. And so uh, uh, for clarity, the, yeah, there you go. Just to make it clear that it's not the same appraisal policy. There's two appraisal policies. That's the, the new suggestion there. Yeah, but this is the appraisal policy for evidence versus Okay, there we go. Now I think we're good. Right. So commit this. While it's thinking, 
me put the rebased uh, version from Jerry back here. So what I do not understand in this sentence, in this complete new text, is in the um, hypothesis at the end. It says that the result of the before mentioned text is that the verifier is now able to trust attestation evidence without an additional endorsement. But, uh, uh, I commented on that too. And now that ah, the yeah. base is lost by inline comment, but the inline comment is back in the conversation part. I now understand what he's getting at, but it gives me a different problem with this text. Um, in the original so, thing, so, what, what he means by additional endorsement is you may still need an endorsement. Okay, You may need an endorsement or for around the signature or on the link. And so what he means by additional is in addition to the one that you already have to use. And so that wasn't clear to me at all. And so I would want him to rephrase that. But it does mean that um, uh, the problem that it gave me is uh, I'm not sure the term implicit trust is the right term here, right? And so you see line 698 talks about implicitly trusted, right? And so the context of the term implicit trust up above in that paragraph is the thing that you implicitly trust is the thing that you trust to be true without any other evidence. You just have, it's like your root of trust, right? That's kind of defining root of trust, right? The, the thing that you have no other thing, you just take it on faith, right? And so, what he's saying here is implicit trust can also be tied to the communications link. Well, um, either he's saying you have to implicitly trust the communications link, which is not true based on that bottom paragraph, right? Because it's uh, he said there may be an additional endorsement in addition to the, because in his uh, text that he was saying, uh, let's see, line 707, may have received evidence that the communications link is anchored to a root of trust from an entity that established the communications link, right? So the link itself is not implicitly trusted, right? Because it may have evidence that's anchored to a root of trust, right? It's the root of trust that's implicitly trusted, not the communications link. And so that's what line I, 700 I, starts to be confusing to me as to what he means by implicit trust here. I trust you to assert your IP address as long as you have a link up from me to me from that IP address. It always, it always gets circular whenever you try to but it shouldn't be circular it should be grounded at something that's a root of trust right is he saying that the communications link is a root of trust or i don't think he is and it's grounded at, in this thing like that sim card that's what he's right. even so he say six, 702 there's still an implicitly trusted root of trust right even a, even a root of trust isn't implicitly trusted because there is a manufacturer credential uh, the endorsement. So yeah, but so, so the thing about the root of Correct. trust is uh, uh, you trust it because there is a trust anchor, an authority outside of the device that vouches for it. And you can choose to trust that certification path to the trust anchor or not. And that oh. is, uh, if you do so, it is a root of trust. Well, I think Ned's point is that whoever the endorsement chains up to is actually your implicit root of trust. Everything else is signed and vouched for by somebody else, right? At some point, you get to, like, if you're using uh, a PKI for your endorsement, which you may or may not, but if you were, then it's the, 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 the CA at the root of that that's actually your implicit root of trust. No, I think the CA is the, the explicit, root, explicit root. It vouches for the, for the, for the root of trust, the, the thingy, that is implicit trusted now. And now you build with that a secure channel that you then again implicitly trust. Okay. The point is if you have a chain of security, then the thing in the middle is not the root. The thing at the end is the root. I think, and then I agree with you, Ned. 
So the, the end is in the device. Yes. Yeah. So so the T the TCG definition, which they haven't published, goes along the lines of if the key, uh, it's implicit. Well, they're 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 defining implicit attestation, which may differ from implicit trust, but implicit attestation is that the key doesn't exist unless you are in a, a good state. But uh, you know that's that's on a different path than trying to define implicit trust. I don't uh, people are going to confuse the two if they're different. And I don't know that there's a good industry definition for implicit trust. It's uh, you either trusted or you don't. Kind of a thing. It's either trusted or it's not. I think one seven hundred would be improved if the word implicit was removed. The rest of that sentence still works. Still, yes, but maybe just for a second. Transitive. Is that ringing good or bad? I don't know. Where because is basically, it's transitive. Well, it's not. He's asking whether that would be helpful. I. I think it reads fine if the word implicit is removed. I think it actually reduces the uncertainty. And you say his trust can also be tied to the communications link. Uh, yeah, I, I think his point is still valid. Sorry, his uh, Gary's point is still valid there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, less words always better, I assume. Okay. So the, there can be implicit trust all along the thing. It's not really tied to just a root of trust. You know, it, it really is tied to the idea that at the appraisal point, whether or not a claim needs to be verified in some way or not. If it doesn't, then you're implicitly trusting that that claim is okay and where that claim came from, including whatever processing went into that. So if you have something gathering an evidence somewhere that's going to be presented in that testation, um, if you don't trust that um, evidence gatherer implicitly, you need a claim suggesting why you should trust it. All right, so the only time that implicit trust occurs in the document right now is there in 698 where it's implicitly trusted just as part of defining the term uh, root of trust and so I, I i like that i don't know that we need to use implicit trust elsewhere in the document 700 uses it just it. generates questions you know discussions like we're having right now that i don't think is central to the point that uh, gary's trying to make i don't disagree with you peter but <laughs> i just saying i don't think we have to get into it in the document list <clears throat> well, uh, yeah i'm not necessarily saying that you need to have it in the document unless we feel that that's a point I want people to understand. Yeah, yeah. But I, I was really commenting on the idea of tying implicit trust to a actual root of trust that you've identified somewhere in the uh, architecture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't, I think the point is, is there's no difference between the term implicit trust and trust. They will mean the same thing to most readers. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, we still need, I think, just popping back a level, um, Hank and I, you still have problems with line uh, 714, the comments about the endorsement. Yeah, and, and I have an additional comment um, now, meanwhile, so to speak, um, because I am, I, I, maybe I need an example of what additional endorsement we can now skip here. Because I don't find a good one from the top of my head. So what is the benefit me, of skipping an additional endorsement here? Since he's not on the call, I'm going to try to give my guess as to, I'm going to try to channel Gary, because I think I understand his point. And so I'm going to try to translate for you again, to the extent that I can, okay? Um, so if you were, I'm going to first talk about, not the case he's talking about, because I'm going to give it as an analogy, right? If we talk about layered attestation, right? Then what happens is you have a, an attesting environment and a tested environment, and the test environment becomes the attesting environment for the next layer up and so on, right? And so what you get is you get a, a, a collection of evidence that has one layer that signs the next layer that signs the next layer, right? And it's all inside the, the blob that we call evidence, which has multiple layers inside it encoded somehow. Okay, you with me so far? Uh -huh. Okay. The analogy is, okay, let's take the bottom layer and replace that with something that's outside the evidence and is instead uh, communicated as part of the communications link. And so the binding between the two layers of claim sets is when one is sent across a communications channel that was established with the other, then the then Gary's claim is the chain is still valid. Okay. And so what happens is the root is done at the time, sorry, the, the bottom layer, uh, the bottom linkage or whatever, bottom set of claims is done at the time that the link comes up, not at the not at some later time. Okay. 
And so at that time, the bottom one um, still has an endorsement, just like the bottom would be in layered attestation, right? And so the, the, when you're sending you know, the top half of it or whatever, you're sending that across the link and you don't need an additional endorsement for the top half, just like you don't need endorsements at multiple layers in layered attestation. It's only the bottom layer that you need an, an, that you need an endorsement for. And so, so I think Dave, can I give you a, a really it. concrete maybe example um, of this if to make sure if I understand what you're saying? Mm -hmm. um, so let's say we have that layered thing, as you just said, and the, the, the signed evidence goes into uh, a special magic piece of RAM, uh, which has a JTAG interface to the verifier. And so the verifier knows that he's reading that RAM through this magic communications link and therefore knows that he's reading the correct thing. Is that a, an example? Um, I think so. Although I think in Jerry's examples, he typically uses IP links or things. I know, to... IP, that's why I made up something different yeah, to make yeah. sure that I understood that it, it. So that bottom layer has this implicit trust because of the nature of the communication link. And therefore the thing that you're reading, even though it's not signed by that layer, is communicated securely is what you think i think his point is it's actually signed it's yes. signed because it's well i should say in the ip case i don't know about the jpeg case it's signed because it's going across an encrypted channel or at least a signed channel yep. and the process of encapsulation actually takes care of signing by putting it inside the sign putting it inside the signed channel agreed yeah so it's signed at the but it's, it's, time it's, as it's opposed signed to the by that implicit key of the yeah. link not yeah. by the uh, yeah. uh a specific signature on it Yes. Okay. It's just so find a time of conveyance rather than time of generation, which could be, you know, a millisecond later or something, or perhaps longer. So is so is there something in this in this part here that we want to change to make this clear now that we understand it? Yes. The term additional endorsement both Hank and I found confusing. It was only if you go if you were to look in the conversation part, you see our discussion and you can see Gary's response to it, but which is how I now understand what he meant by additional endorsement because I was confused by the text. So, so that's over here. That that's still in the old in the old uh, uh, number yeah, sixty. Correct. Right, because he says any endorsement would be applied to assertions associated with the communications link, not the attestation evidence. And so his assertions associated with the communications link was uh, the part where he says, at the top of your screen, what about the following? Or may have received evidence from the communications link, right? So right. that's the first time he's actually mentioning in his comment 14 hours ago that there's evidence associated with the communications link that evidence contains claims or assertions. And that's what he means by any endorsement would apply to that. So there's still something at the bottom of the you know chain, if you will, uh, that has evidence, assertions, and uh, endorsements possibly. So making that be clearer, I think, was what we want. The, the the endpoint of the communications link is an endorser. Uh, no, not necessarily. No. How is the communications endorser? link no. would be between the tester and the verifier. The verifier but, may still need to communicate with an endorser through some separate channel on the back end. The ver the verify so in in the context of this the verifier uh, might have a policy that says if the other end of this link is signed by CAX then it's that's an endorsement right the communication link comes up with a certificate from X so that would work uh, or there might be further evidence in the certificate yeah. but yeah. Yeah. the communication uh -huh. link came up from uh it, it came up and that that thing that was used to establish it uh caused it so what is uh, it i think those are all true statements those are different examples than the ones that i had in mind but i believe that all those are true statements right so uh, that that sounds like ocsp for example for instance ocsp would be another uh, uh way of doing it yeah so what is it we're trying to fix in this piece here so that it's clearer to the next reader Maybe we'll trust the evidence from the device without an additional endorsement. So I think it's partly this additional word additional. Correct. That's bothering us. Correct. Hank, is that the same word that threw you? Yep. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to go back to this one. 
and try and see if we there's something we can because it's the one they're editing. Uh, if there's something we can fix here. So let me see here. If I hit cancel here. do that okay on the device and I think that it's this part that's really bothering us you need to say uh, may be able to trust the attestation evidence from the device using the uh, I'm going to say the implicit evidence conveyed by the communication link, but that's probably not the right worry. Tori, we for me to have a better suggestion for you right now. <laughs> Sorry, you have one? No, I said it's still too early in the morning for me to be able to uh, come up with it. Okay. Well, you went from two two statements of negative to a statement of positive. Yeah, and that's what I think we're trying to do. But the, the, that means you have to identify all the positive cases, and I, I don't know that we know what they are. I, I think it's saying, we're sort of saying, hey, uh, the architecture defines all defines a few positive ways of doing this. We call that endorsement, but you can still have policies that that allow trust in some other way, which we're not defining here. And I think that's the correct statement. Uh, okay, so maybe we just want to make a note that we're uncomfortable with this this part here. I'm 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 okay with just saying removing the word additional and just saying without endorsement or even whatever the text was where it went. But the point is, there could have been an endorsement, but it would be endorsement related to line seven oh seven. The, the the verifier may be able to trust the attestation evidence without endorsement or even cryptographically verifiable signature of the evidence. And that, that's just a, it's a statement of of um, it's um, a statement about trust that the. The verifier can trust things for no good reason, essentially, and that's okay. And I agree with that. Um, I'm so I, I agree with that too. I'm not with that. Oh, go ahead. I say something about the policy that it, it's according to the appraisal policy that is going to govern what level of trust you can put in this and what evidence is necessary. Right. So if the policy says that you can trust it without further evidence, then uh, that's okay. If you can need additional evidence, then you can. So, it, so, so what if we said as a result, um, uh, the verifier, uh, I want to put the word policy in here. The verifier could have a policy that allows it to trust the attestation evidence without endorsement. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, so you can, you have the ability as an appraiser, according to your own policy, to take evidence at face value or require yes. evidence about the evidence. And that evidence about the evidence may come in the form of an endorsement or um, some chain of endorsements. You know, more evidence followed by eventually something rooted in a root of trust. And, and so it, it gets to the wisdom of your appraisal policy uh, on what it really means. Did you really establish trust or not? Some people might say, yeah, I trust it. It's not a, it's not a big deal. 
other people say, I need more in order to trust you. Michael, I think you mean appraisal policy, not attestation policy. Appraisal policy. Uh, I'm not appraisal policy, I said attestation policy, I'm sorry. No, I think Michael, typed, Michael just typed it wrong. I think you said it right. An appraisal policy for the verifier may be permitted that trusts the attestation evidence from the device without endorsement or cryptographically verifies signature. Maybe permitted is the wrong word. Possible. Yeah. I mean, it, the, the real idea is that trust is in the eye of the beholder as expressed in your attestation or your appraisal policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the appraisal policy could even negate what the endorsement and the evidence says and trust it anyway, or not trust it anyway. Um, all that's true, although we probably want a statement in the security consideration section saying, if you do that, uh, you, you, get you, you, you get what you get. <laughs> a mechanism point of view. But I, I thought that I thought Gary's was trying to argue that it's possible to do it without loss of any strength of the security. I, I'm not sure that's what he's arguing, but that's what I, that's what I Think that he's arguing. Uh, yeah, in that case, I think I disagree. But, but then I think you still would need like an endorsement of the uh, thing that is signing the link. Yeah. He says, you know, evidence up there in line 707, right? You still want an endorsement for that. So again, it, it falls back on appraisal policy. Yeah. You can have insecure appraisal policies too. About implicitly trusting something, you have to have had some reason to do that. That might have been just because you felt like it, but it might have been some other channel of establishing trust in that thing. So, with respect to a given attestation, it looks implicit, but you have some other idea of trust that, that came, perhaps from an attestation from some other device, or per perhaps uh, the, something you do trust. So time check. Um, do you want to c go with this text? I've just opened an issue to add security considerations text for this. Um, it's probably two paragraphs there. Um, I'm not sure we're done discussing this one. We might so, be able to discuss with it in four minutes. I don't know, but I don't think we're done yet. Okay, so I'm going to add that suggestion to the batch. Okay, and I'm going to ask Jiri for his comment and review. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can do that here, maybe. Um, and uh, apparently I can. Um, convert to draft, what does that mean? I don't know what, it, what that means. I've never seen um, that either. <laughs> So I'm going to leave that there. This one is closed for that. What I want to do in the three minutes we have is uh, come back to the issues. Um, when are we done? Uh, do we think we're going to ch want to change all of these? Um, we're going to want to finish all of these or are some of them... Uh, beyond the pale of what we want. Um, I don't know if we have any tags uh, labeled. That's your question. When are we done? We're done when working group last call passes and IETF last call passes. Otherwise, we're not done. Of course. When, when do, when do <laughs> we that, think we're ready for working right? group last call, right? Yeah, when are we confident to, to challenge these conditions? So, yeah. Uh, I can, I, I, so, personally, so, I don't think we can uh, just omit a issue. Uh, a owner has to declare victory or defeat on an issue, I assume. Well, or at well, least the working I, group chairs have to declare a uh, rough consensus, one or the other. Well, what I'm so interested in, in is for people to read the issues. And, um, you know, if you like, uh, what can you do? You know, this button, right? 
if you completely think it's useless or whatever, I, I'm, that's what I'm trying to get at. Um, um, we have uh, some, cons some agreement about, yes, this issue needs to be solved or some view that this is not, in, not an issue would be good from a group so that we can sort of know what to fix next or know what, whether we're uh, approaching getting closer or further away, right? Yeah, just one comment on this procedure. Uh, if there is uh, one uh, very uh, engaged uh, individual and nobody else has an opinion, this always stays on. That is not rough consensus. That is a single voice. Although uh, I think we should address. Uh, maybe uh, you may be in the rough. So um, I didn't know about the. I, I didn't know about the up down. But where do you actually see? The results of that, like if you up or down vote something, Let's say if I do this to Ned's thing, I go on the happy face. Come on, happy face. Oh, I have to click on it, and then you can say down. Yep. You see, it gives you a, a down gotcha, button. Gotcha. React is sounds thumbs down, and I can click on it again, and it goes away. Okay. Uh, I got and it. then Thanks. hooray, rocket, whatever that means. Oh, I love it. I'm confused. Right. Pick your reaction. Not a no, I didn't see where we at the bottom. That's why. Thanks. Whatever rocket means, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever that we decide it means. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there you go. Okay, so I guess we'll talk again this afternoon, or we'll talk see each other this afternoon. Um, thanks. Yes, sir.